Prophet Malcolm Dean read an outstanding scripture. And I would like for us to look at a few verses of that scripture. And it's taken from Genesis. The chapter is number 22. Genesis chapter 22. We'll read a few verses, mm -hmm. verses 1 through verse number 4. It reads, Now it came to pass, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offerings and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. I would like to lift up this line as the subject. When we worship God like Abraham, miracles happen. When we worship God like Abraham, miracles happen. Shall we pray? Father, our Father, we beseech you today. Touch, O oh God, the core of my being. I need you, Lord. I need heavenly help. I know any of us can do anything without your assistance and your power. Lord, energize me Invigorate me, sanctify me afresh, fill me afresh with the power and the fire of your Holy Ghost. Lord, I'm depending on you. No one else I can depend on. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. There are wars and rumors of wars. Do it, Lord. Bring peace to our hearts. Save us, Lord. Bring
bring the backsliders back home. And those who do not know you yet, I'm, ple I'm pleading, I'm pleading, I'm pleading. We're pleading, Lord. You will save to the utmost. Now, as this word go forth, let it be your words, not George Winley's word. In the name of Jesus, hear. Hear our prayers. And forgive our sins. We ask it in the matchless name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. When we worship God, like Abraham, miracles happen. You've heard the phrase, when we fail to plan, we plan to fail. There will almost always be those fail to plan, fail to make goals for their life. They meander in the maze of meaningless and mediocrity. They may, prom they may promise to do many things, but they break those promises. We break those promises. We promise to break a bad habit, but we never achieve it. We make plans, make plans, and give promises to come to the Lord house. But some never come until the undertaker rolled their body down the aisle. Some promise and make plans to come to the Sunday school, come to Bible study, even get on the Zoom from their own home. They promise, but you never see their faces on the Zoom. Promise to come to prayer, be in prayer services at 6 a.m. Never hear their voices. And they never show up to prayer, even when the coronavirus, Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma, Omicron viruses were not heard of. We make promises to the Lord, promises to their families, promises to the pastors and preachers, deacons and trustees, and fellow members in the fellowship, that they will do better, be better, live better, give better, serve. Promise God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, with their whole heart, with all they have. Yet, many of us fail to keep our promises. But here was a man, Abraham. God told Abraham. I want you to leave your home, leave your kindred and your acquaintances and relatives, and I want you to go where I'm going to show you. I want you to worship, worship me. The word worship means 
the act or the rights that make up a formal expression of reference to a deity. It means to show holy reverence and adoration for and to the one who created us. You see, God created us in his likeness and in his image for a divine purpose. God did it. And we owe God, we owe him our allegiance, our praise, our praise, our worship, our love, and our adoration. We need to take lessons from this great patriarch, Abraham. And if we do, we will have longevity of life, We'll have peace, love, joy, blessings, and an abundant life living with the Lord. Not only will our life be blessed, but our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, our family members will also be blessed. If we would just follow Abraham, as he worshiped God. You see, Abraham obeyed the voice of the Lord God while he was a young man. And young people, the best time and the right time to give your life to the Lord is while you're young. Word of God said, remember now, now, the creator in the days of your youth. Don't wait until you get old and sick and feeble. Don't wait until you get, yeah, death is hoovering over your body. Don't wait until the doctors have given you up. To give your life to the Lord. But do it now while you're young. Young people, have you ever seen them? Even in the church, they're volunteer. Young people, they will volunteer to read a scripture, sing a song, say a speech. But it's hard for older person to stand up. Hallelujah. And do those things. Some young people would just volunteer. I'll sing today. I'll do the prayer. I'll read the scripture. Hallelujah. Their heart is drawn close to God while they are young. That is the right time to give God your life. Abraham was a young man in Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees. God spoke to him and told him, Abraham, I want you to leave your father, leave your family and acquaintances, and I want you, Abraham, to go to the place where I will show you. The word of God said, Abraham obeyed, and by faith, he followed the dictates of God, and he was blessed beyond measure. Abraham left home. Abraham left his siblings, his sisters and brothers. He did not allow them to stop him. Yeah, from doing what the Lord told him to do. And I'm encouraging all of us, never allow anyone, your father, your mother, 
your sisters, your brothers, your wife, your children, or anyone else stop you and block you from doing what the Lord said. Help me, Holy Ghost. Abraham left his familiar environment. Abraham left his homeboys. I tell you, brothers and sisters, you must sometime, if you want to do what God wants you to do, leave your homeboys. Some people want to get close enough to you to pull you back and pull you down. You have to leave them behind and do what the Lord wants you to do. Young ladies, listen to your pastor. Your best friend in this world is Jesus, not your homegirls, not your homeboys. Let Jesus be your best friend. Follow Jesus. Some of you, some of us could have been in school right now. But because our homeboy not going, our homegirl not going, some are still on the block. So you'd rather stay on the block instead of getting your life together and getting your head and heart together. Hallelujah. Are you listening this morning? In order... To worship God like Abraham, we must have and do several things. First of all, like Abraham, we must have a great relationship with God. First thing, we must be saved. We cannot have a great relationship with God if we are still a sinner, make sure you save. And then secondly, like Abraham, we must hear and obey God's voice. Hear and obey God's voice. Third, we must worship God. And worshiping God involves a test. Look what God told Abraham. Abraham, leave home. Abraham, take your son. I want you to worship me on a mountain. Yeah, about three days from where you live. Worshiping God, fourth, involve making accurate preparation. We must prepare to worship God. Look what Abraham did in the preparation stage. Abraham, first of all, he got out early that morning and he saddled the donkey. He put a saddle on the dome. Then Abraham got up and he cut some wood. Hallelujah. Got some kindling. Yeah, firewood. Next thing, Abraham got some fire. In those days, they did not have matches, but they had to carry a fire with you. All of us Need some fire. Holy Ghost fire. No one can worship God for me but me. No one can worship God for you but you. Hallelujah. Abraham, when he started worshiping God, he was at home. When he saddled a donkey, he was at home. When he cut the wood, he was at home. 
When he got the fire, he was at home. That tells us we cannot wait until we get to the place uh, where we worship God. We must start at home. Start preparing to worship God at home. Don't wait to come to the church for Mr. Brown and the musicians to play music and pump you up. Don't wait until Reverend Leroy McAveen and Reverend Joe Louis Roberts, Reverend Michelle and Herman Holland, Reverend Clarence Hilton, and all the other preachers, yeah, to prime you up and preach you up. No, start getting ready early. Weeks before, days before, you come to the house of the Lord. We cannot wait for the choir. No, no, no. If you want effective worship experience, next Sunday, we must start today. We must start singing sacred songs and holy hymns. Start doing it now. Start praying and fasting and reading and studying God's word. Start now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Don't wait until you get to the house. Don't wait until you get in your car on the yard. But start now. Yeah, start telling others what good thing the Lord has already done for you. Start now. Start telling people. Start. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Start witnessing to others and winning souls to the master. Prepare ourselves to worship. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we need to start early. We, when we come to worship God at the sacred place of worship, I believe that is one of the major reasons why many come to the church house and go back home and never worship God. You have to bring something with you. If you, are, if you want to leave something, bring, bring a praise with you. Bring a worship with you. Bring a thanksgiving with you. Bring your, a godly life with you. Some have been very sick, and God has healed their bodies. Heal our mind. Heal our life. The Spirit of God has compelled us to talk about it, to share it, to testify. But many of us have refused to do that which the Lord has placed in our heart and our mind to do. We want to and we need to, but we become so preoccupied with thinking about what other people would say about us if we would stand up and testify and tell others what the Lord has done. Many became afraid, too ashamed to stand up and tell people what we know the Lord has done in our lives. I remember my younger son told us this. He said he went to church in Greenville where he stayed and he looked around and nobody was praising God. Nobody was standing up and giving God thanksgiving. And he was looking at other people. And then a still small voice said to him, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? So when he heard the voice, he jumped off on the seat, stood up, 
and he started praising God for what the Lord had done for him. Everybody ought to worship God. Everybody ought to praise him. Everybody ought to give God thanksgiving for what the Lord has already done. I will praise him. Hallelujah. I will thank him with the voice I have in every one of us. If you're in your car this morning, you just think about what God has already done for you and with you and just wave your hand, blow your horn, and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been mighty good to me. I want to ask you a question. Did the other people had your pain? Did the other people ride an ambulance for you? Or in the helicopter? While you were being transferred or rushed to the hospital? Did the other people have open heart surgery for you? Did the other people had an operation on your head and in your brain? Did the other people, yeah, had problems for you of their living lungs and parts of their body? Did the other people have a hip or knee, a major surgery done for you? If they have not, and none of us did that for you or me, we ought to praise and give God thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to thank him and praise him. Yes. We ought to worship him like Abraham did. Well, I got to move toward a close now. Look what happened. Abraham, Abraham, like Abraham, all of us need to be prepared. Abraham got prepared, I told you, before he left home. Like Abraham, in order to worship him, we must hear and obey the voice of God and do what God tells us to do. Third, like Abraham, we must get up early, early in the morning, early, and fall on our knees and worship God. We need to cut the wood, get the wood ready, prepare for the sacrifice. Abraham saddled the donkey. Hallelujah. He got the fire. He got his son. And I tell you, family members, fathers, make sure you bring your son. Bring your son. Fathers. We are the high priest of our family. We are the ones supposed to lead our wives and our children to the Lord God Almighty. We are the one supposed to get up early and get things ready, pray for our family. We are the ones should have the fire ready. Make sure we bring our sons and daughters. Wake them up early. Get them up out of the bed. And get on to the house of God. Abraham took the servants. That means we need to bring others. Not only bring our children, our wives, but go by and pick up other people and bring them to the Lord. The Bible said that Abraham brought his servants. And then finally, Abraham took the three-day journey. And he went to Mount Moriah. Hallelujah. He went to Mount Moriah. Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham loved God with every fiber of his being. And he was willing 
to obey God. God said, Abraham, I want you, you, to sacrifice your son, your only son, the son I gave you, and Abraham, and Sarah. Abraham, I know you were 100 years old when your son was born, but I want you to sacrifice that son. Put him on the altar. I want you to slay him. I want you to burn him on the altar. Hallelujah. Abraham took the boy, placed the wood on the boy's back, had the fire in his hand, had the knife in his hand. And on the way up the steep slopes of Mount Moriah, the boy said, Father, I see you have the wood. Father, you have the fire. But tell me, Father, where is the sacrifice? Abraham said, Son, my God will provide for himself a sacrifice. He kept on going. And when he got to Mount Moriah at the top, Abraham built an altar. Hallelujah. He tied his son, laid him on the altar. And Abraham took out the knife to kill his own only son. And while he drew the knife and he raised the knife, an angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, don't harm the boy. Abraham, Abraham, God has provided. Abraham looked around and saw a ram caught by his horn in the thicket. So what Abraham did, Abraham took the ram and sacrificed the lamb. Thank God, thank God. God does not want anyone to kill another person. But Jesus came and, and Jesus became the sacrifice for us. If we follow the Lord Jesus, if we obey God's voice, miracles will happen. Thank God for the miracle. Thank God he provided his own sons as a sacrificial lamb. Thank you. At Calvary, on the cross, at the cross, it was at the cross where we first saw the light and the burdens of our heart rolled away. It was there by sight I received my sight. And now I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. all the day. And this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And this joy, the world can't take it away. When we obey, yeah, God, and worship him like Abraham, we shall be blessed. I've given to you what the Holy Spirit led in my spirit. Will there be one today? You invited just as you are, just as you are. You shall be blessed. Let us worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for watching. This live stream is brought to you by the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Media Ministry. If you're new to Ebenezer, we would love to see you. Our Sunday services are held every morning at 10 a.m. at 105 Dickens Street, Manning, South Carolina. You may remain in your car or join us in the sanctuary. We also invite you to become a member of our online community. Like us on Facebook and visit our website www.embcmanning.org. 
There you will find links to our YouTube channels and go ahead and subscribe to them also so you know when we upload a new video. On our website you will also find links to our Zoom meetings. Join us every morning at 6 a.m. for prayer, Wednesday for Bible study at 7 p.m., and Women's Empowerment every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. These meetings are also live streamed through our Facebook page. There are three ways to give to Ebenezer and Dominion Ministry. Go to our website and click on Give Lafay, mail a check or money order to P.O. Box 728, Manning, South Carolina, 29102, or you can give in person. Have a blessed day.